So in this video we're again going to be looking at simultaneous equations. This time we're going to look at how we solve them through the method of substitution. Uh, I'm going to do two examples with you. The first is actually dealing with a pair of simultaneous equations that are both linear and they could actually be solved using substitution or, or sorry they could be solved using um, elimination which is the last method I showed you um, and in fact it would probably be easier to do it that way but I'm going to show you this method of substitution because it can work on both uh, linear equations and also equations that uh, involve quadratics. In fact, where there are quadratics involved, you would have to use this method, so it's important that we do know it. Um, so when we're trying to uh, solve through substitution, basically what we have to do is take one of the equations and make x or y the subject of that equation. I'm going to take the second equation and make x the subject because it's incredibly easy to do that. So if I want to make x the subject, and again, if you're a wee bit shaky on making a, a term the subject of the equation, there's a video that you can watch um, just to refresh your memory, uh, your memory on that. That means I'm going to get x on its own on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 3y, this positive 3y across the left hand side and it will become a minus 3y. So this equation, uh, the second one will become x equals, it's not on its own because I've moved the 3y away, equals 28 minus 3y. So now that I know that x is equal to 28 minus 3y, I can take this 28 minus 3y and I can substitute it into the first equation replacing x with this. So what this will become is x, instead of writing x, I'm going to write 28 minus 3y because I know that x is equal to 28 minus 3y. And then I just write the rest of the equation as is, plus 7y equals 64. Because what I have now is actually an equation that involves just y, and I can solve that. Okay? So bringing the terms together, so I end up with 28 minus 3y plus 7y is positive 4y is equal to 64. I'm going to get rid of the 20. That's now a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract the 28 from the left to get rid of it, but remember I have to do that to the right hand side as well. Again, if you're a wee bit shaky, there's a video on solving two step equations. So 28, take away 28 to zero, so it's gone. Um, I'm left with 4y on the left hand side is equal to 64. Take away 28, which is 36. And therefore I just divide by four to get one y. And y equals nine. So, what I now have to do is then substitute my y equals 9. So just like um, the method of elimination back into one of the equations. So substitute y equals 9 into previous equations. So I'm going to go for the top equation just for something a little bit different. So it becomes x plus 7 times 9 equals Sixty-four. That's my next nine of working out. I just substitute that in. So seven nines are sixty-three. So therefore, x plus sixty-three equals sixty-four. X would therefore have to equal to one. All right. And as always, good practice just to check my answer using the other equation. So if I take x plus three y equals twenty-eight, well, I had values of y equals nine and x equals one. So if I substitute those in, so x was one plus three times nine should give me 28. Well, that will give me one plus three times nine, which is 27, which does in fact give me 28, so that is correct. So that is the method of substitution on two linear equations. And I am going to do another example, this time one that involves one of the equations being a quadratic. I have to therefore solve using this method because I can't subtract one equation away from the other to get rid of either the x or the y, okay? So I'm gonna take this second one, and it wouldn't actually matter if I made x or y the subject here. I'm gonna make uh, y the subject just for something a wee bit different. So I'm gonna subtract x, I'm gonna move it to the right-hand side, so I end up with y equals six minus x, and six minus x is gonna be replaced into this equation in place of y. So this is x squared plus y squared, which is now 6 minus x, all squared. Now, this is all squared, so we're going to use FOIL in a wee second to multiply that out. And again, it's a previous video, if you're unsure about multiplying out two brackets using FOIL, make sure to watch. Equals 20. So expand using FOIL. So remember, FOIL is first, 
still got that x squared at the front, outer, inner, and last. So the first two terms in each bracket, six sixes are 36. Outer, always be careful of positives and negatives when you're doing this. Six times x is minus six x. Inner is also x time, minus x times six, which is again minus six x. And the last, minus x times minus x, which gives me positive x squared, which equals 20. Collect the x squareds and the x's together, so collecting like terms here, I've got x squared plus x squared, which is indeed 2x squared, plus 36, um, and then got minus 6x, minus 6x, which is minus 12x, equals 20. Now we're going to get everything to the left hand side here, make the right hand side equal to 0, and then factorize and solve the equation, we're going to get two values of x here. So I'm going to rearrange it and I'm going to subtract 20 from the right hand side to get rid of that 20 and make it equal to 0. But I have to subtract 20 from here as well. So I end up with 2x squared plus 16 minus 12x equals 0. Okay. Um, I'm just going to rearrange it and divide the whole thing by 2 in a wee second. So I've got 2x squared plus... Uh, yep, sorry, I'm going to divide across by 2. The whole thing so i've got x squared plus six uh, plus eight minus six x equals zero um and now i'm just going to rearrange it in the form of x squared my x term and then my eight also now this is ready to factorize and again factorize in a quadratic if you're unsure make sure to watch the video one so this term on its own the minus 8 is the product, so I need two numbers that multiply together to give me minus 8, or add or subtract to give me a sum of minus 6. So, sorry, this should be a positive 8. So, positive 8. So, I know I'm going to get an x and an x, and then what I will have here is I have two negatives that multiply together to give me a positive 8, and it will be 2 and 4, and that works because minus 2 take away 4 gives me minus 6. In the middle so my values for x are x equals uh, 2 because x minus 2 equals 0 and x equals 4. Now when I get to this stage and again just bear in mind this question probably we have quite a few marks because essentially I'm going to end up with four answers two answers for x and two corresponding answers for y. I take my value when x equals 2 and I'm going to substitute it into the second equation because that will be very easy to solve so x plus y equals 6. So when x is 2, I've got 2 plus y equals 6, therefore y equals 4. And my other value, of course, when x equals 4, um, use the same equation, x plus y equals 6, x will equal 4 in this case, and y would equal 2, because 4 plus 2 has to equal 6. So when x is 2, y is 4. When x is 4, y is 2. Okay, now again, like anything involving simultaneous equations, it's always a good idea to substitute your values back into uh, one of the equations just to check it's okay. I'm going to check my first set of answers when x is 2 and y is 4, and I'm going to use the first equation, x squared plus y squared equals 20. So x squared plus y squared equals 20. So I have 2 squared plus 4 squared equals 20. That should make sense. So 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16, and that does in fact equal 20. So that's the first set of answers checked, and they're okay. I'm going to check also my values for when x equals 4 here, and y equals 2. So I end up with x squared plus y squared equals 20 again. Pretty much just the opposite way around. So I end up with 4 squared plus 2 squared equals 20, so 16 plus 4 does in fact equal 20 okay so my answers here when x equals 2 y equals 4 and when x equals 4 y equals 2 and that's not uncommon to get four answers like that when we're dealing with a pair of uh, simultaneous equations where a quadratic is involved okay so i'll put some questions in for you to try and anything you're unsure about just ask these can get quite tricky and um, but remember in this case we're using the method of substitution to solve